Sitting at the mouth of the Pasagasawakee River, Belfast is Waldo County's only city, home to around 6,600 people. Settled in 1770, Belfast is awash in history. From the waterfront to downtown. And to learn more, all you have to do is take a walk through the streets. 30 panels throughout the city highlight events and locations key to Belfast's history. Together, they are the Museum in the Streets, designed as a self-guided walking tour. Megan Panette, president of the Belfast Historical Society, joins me. So this is the big picture. Yes, we have two of these large map panels. So it gives a little bit of intro into Belfast history. And then right behind me is a, the panel that describes the, the Opera House building that was the big social center in Belfast uh, following the, the end of the Civil War. I like this one because in addition to all the horses and wagons and carriages, there's one automobile. We're now at uh, what's is known as Post Office Square. This is a great view from the 1920s looking down Main Street. Even in 2017 today, this looks exactly the same. The buildings really have not changed in this image since about 1909. So if somebody came back in time... They would know exactly where they were. <laughs> back at the Historical Society and Museum, Panette shows off Belfast's 1864 Civil War quilt. One of the greatest treasures to come into the Belfast Museum. It was sewn by a group of unmarried ladies. They sewed it as an inspirational quilt, so it was meant to hang in a hospital. They sent it to the Armory Square Hospital in Washington, D.C., and when the hospital closed, it went into the possession of the surgeon in charge of that hospital. His daughter got married, and with her husband, they headed out to Montana. And that's where this quilt remained for 147 years before finally coming back to Belfast. One of the ladies who had this quilt in her possession realized, oh, there's writing on this quilt, and one of the stripes, it says Belfast, Maine. We're proud of her. Another piece of Belfast's past and present shipbuilding. French and Webb builds custom yachts. We do a lot of smaller, very carefully executed functional artwork that we can float on the water. <laughs> <laughs> functional artwork we can float on the water, I like that. <laughs> we are really good at joinery, we're known for our joinery, but we've had to kind of delve into high-end composite work too, and the same guys that could be working on those could actually be doing a plank on frame boat that was constructed in the methods of 1916. In production is a 28-foot boat with a composite hull. So this premise of this boat is that it's efficient. We've designed this hull to do 55 miles an hour. Oh my God. <laughs> you know those Yeti coolers? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Got Which that are boat. awesome, right? <laughs> There's tracks like you would see on a sailboat mm -hmm. that are set in these grooves. And the Yeti goes all the way across this thing You're kidding and me. slides you back and forth. Way. Did you really? Yeah. I mean, I can show you tons of pictures where our woodworking is just shining, you know, like mm -hmm. this. You know, we wanted some of it, but not overdone. Mm -hmm. That's varnished straight in. Beautiful. French and Webb also restores classic racing yachts. We restored three 1902 50 foot Harishoffs. During that project, I got really, really interested in connecting back with the past and the craftsmen from the past. Bring these the sole of these boats forward and make them more functional for today's competitive racing circuit. For yachters, French and Webb is like Disney World, the place where dreams come true. We have clients that come in and have maybe a special dream that they want to explore. They choose us and then entrust us to kind of build some of their dreams. Really beautiful boats, mm -hmm. and French and Webb now has a presidential yacht, the USS Sequoia. Right, they're going to be restoring that actually mm -hmm. over the next four years. It was the presidential yacht first under Herbert Hoover. Uh, John F. Kennedy, in fact, had his last birthday party on that yacht, and then it was President Carter who actually sold it, saying he didn't think American taxpayers should pay for it. By the way, there's a documentary being produced about this restoration. All right, okay, pride is woven into every Swan's Island blanket.